The purpose of our 2015 volatilization dosimeter trials is to be able to detect how much loss we're getting from bands in the soil using urea. We want to know these differences so that we can set our, the depth of our banders at the optimum position in order to save as much nitrogen in the soil and not lose it via volatilization. Our MRB banders are capable of setting the depth of a band independent of where our seed goes. So it gives Borgo a unique opportunity to put these bands at the optimum depth in order to save as much nitrogen as possible. Our trials consisted of a control where we just tested with no band going down. Uh, also consisted of one inch depth, mid row bander, two inch, three inch, and four inch. Uh, we also had a side band operation uh, with a dual knife being tested. The products we used were Urea 4600, uh, we also did the same treatments again using a efficiently enhanced fertilizer which inhibits uh, ure urease from activating the nitrogen cycle which allows nitrogen in a liquid form to move deeper into the soil profile before the entire cycle occurs. Uh, it also has a nitrification inhibitor built into it as well. So the purpose of comparing uh, efficiently enhanced fertilizer to straight urea is to see the differences in losses. Uh, every treatment was replicated three times and as well as two different locations uh, in the field. So we had two completely separate locations in the same field, but every treatment was replicated three times. So the way that we set up these dosimeter trials uh, was using a, a small plot drill uh, with a Valmer metering system. And in one pass, we had a mid-row bander uh, with two openers following it to give it the cover over. Uh, with that single pass, we also had a dual knife opener running along, as well as beside that we had it broadcasting. And so what would happen is we would make a pass and then we'd come along with the decimeter and uh, this green cover. Um, the purpose of having a cover uh, is just to somewhat encapsulate uh, the losses coming up from the band. If this is the band that ran here, what you do is you break off your decimeter off the end uh, to allow air to travel inside. You then just put the decimeter over top of that band. And then you use your cover and simply place it on top. Now we usually just set a rock uh, on top in order uh, so that the, the cover doesn't uh, flip open with any wind. I'd like to take you through the results of the volatilization decimeter trials. 12 days after being applied, the data was collected from each of the two sites and three replications at each site of each treatment. The data was then combined for each treatment and averaged. When we do start to look at the, these results, the one thing notice right off the bat is that there was no losses from the control. Obviously no nitrogen fertilizer went down there and we can see that there was also no releasing ammonia from the bare ground. The broadcast application using urea had the highest detectable loss but was decreased when a urease inhibitor was used. This level however was not lower than when either urea by itself or with the use of a urease inhibitor when the nitrogen was placed in the ground in some type of band. Looking at this graph we can see that the side band had a higher detectable loss uh, when comparing to the mid row band at the one inch and this is both in urea uh, as well as nitrogen treated with a urease inhibitor. When we move down the graph uh, comparing the one inch to the two, three and four inch depth with the MRBs uh, we can see that the, the deeper depths were showing hardly any detectable loss. When comparing this against the one inch depth, we can see that there is a, a slight increase at the one inch depth 
And these depths are all measured from the original ground level. So in addition to our small scale dissimilar trials, what we also did here was do some large scale uh, dissimilar trials. We're also gonna bring yield into it. So we have our, our large scale trials with different fertilizer placements. Uh, with that, we also used the exact same treatment and all we did different was set the depths of our mid-row banders on our 3320 uh, at either one inch, uh, two inch, or at three inch. So when we put those dosimeters over top of the mid-row band, uh, we were detecting some different levels of losses between one, two, and three inch uh, when using urea. Uh, so it'll be very interesting uh, to see now how uh, this loss will equate into different yields. I'd like to now take a look at the results from our large-scale dosimeter trials. When we look at the different depths the banders were set at, we can see that there was considerable differences in how much loss uh, was detected. At the one-inch depth, we can see the highest amount of loss. At the two-inch depth, it is considerably less loss than the one-inch and we move to the three inch, losses were virtually zero. Yield wise on these three different trials, there is a large difference between the one inch and the two inch, in this case being about four bushels per acre. Um, when we look between the two inch and the three inch depths, uh, our yield were virtually the same. We can really start to narrow in on uh, an optimal depth that will reduce the amount of nitrogen loss but not increase the draft and power requirements of going deeper. Borgo recommends to set the mid-row bander working depth at 2 to 3 inches below the original ground level. Banding at depths shallower than 2 inches may not provide enough soil cover which would increase the risk of fertilizer losses through volatilization. Banding at excessive depths will increase soil disturbance, fuel consumption, component wear, and the chance of the opener's plugging. When applying anhydrous ammonia, setting banders too deep may also delay the closing of the furrow, increasing the danger of gassing off. Remember when setting the quick depth adjustment available on the 3320C drills that the bander depth will change twice the amount as the openers. When checking seeding depth, also check that you are achieving the desired fertilizer placement. This is important after changing the seating depth on any seating system. Refer to the Borgo operator's manuals for additional information regarding seed depth settings. Just as a reminder, this is the first year of data from a multi-year study. Uh, also, when we're looking at these results, they don't mean any actual amounts of end loss. They're relative differences between different placements. Thank you very much for tuning in and following along on the vladilization to similar trials occurring here at Borgo Industries. We hope that you could use this information or information like this to increase the profitability on your farming operation.